at some point, those mechanical components and those components that protect your pool and whatnot, they will have to be replaced. It's just a question of whether or not it's now or in the future. And if it's in the future, how long is that future, right? It's an interesting time of year for pools because pools have been a hot commodity all year. And now people are buying pools that will be closed when they move in. So one topic of conversation is um, how do we ensure that the pool is working when we close? Now, most houses, you're still uh, quite often in competition. You've got multiple offers. It's not likely that a seller will accept a clause that says there's a pool holdback, which is where money is held in reserve for any repairs that might be due when the pool is opened in the spring. Um, So what do you do? A pool holdback clause should be a part of your negotiation strategy. And if a seller is unwilling to accept it, it probably means you're buying the home at a, uh, at a good valuation. If they are willing to accept it, it might mean that you are overpaying a little bit and they're willing to, to give a bit of that back. Um, so in either circumstance, you should probably be happy because if they've accepted the offer uh, without the pool holdback clause, it probably means you're getting a good deal. If they've accepted the pool holdback clause, you're still getting the house and you've got some money in reserve to um, protect you. And what that pool holdback clause is, is usually is a few thousand bucks, depending on the pool, the size of the home, the price of the home, all of that. But let's call it fifteen hundred to four thousand dollars. That's kind of the spread, maybe on average thousand to five, maybe um, depending on um, the age of the pool and whatnot. So the lawyer keeps that money in trust until the pool is opened, and typically the clause will say some professional has to come in and open it and inspect it, and if there's any any issues, any problems, any deficiencies with that pool, uh, that money then basically pays for those. And if there's a reserve left after those repairs, it goes back to the seller. Um, Oftentimes everything's okay with the pool because people are using it. Most people hire professionals to open and close it. And visually, even to a common person, you can see the age and condition of a lot of the pool equipment and the pool itself, right? You can tell, is the liner in need of a replacement? Um, what, how old is the pool heater, the, you know, the, the pump, um, and all of those things. So I don't put too much value in the pool holdback clause, but what I do put value in is if you're going to buy a pool home, home with a pool now in September, October, Usually pools are closed between Thanksgiving and kind of the end of October would be the last for most people. People are doing it now. I can't get, I can't get a pool company in to do an inspection because everybody's closing pools and trying to finish building their pools. Yes. Um, so you got to do that visual inspection. You got to just see, you know, how does it look? But an important part of that process is to actually have that conversation with the seller and try and get some documentation. So has the pool been opened and closed on a regular basis by a professional pool company? And can you provide um, an invoice that we can see that it was done professionally? Um, and having that conversation, when was the liner replaced or you know, when was the... Um, pump service to replace the the heater service to replace like what are the age of these things are there any current deficiencies that we should know about um you know a lot of times you'll get that information and then the other side of that process is just it's the same thing as having a home inspection, especially now, because a lot of homes are being sold without that clause. So you don't have the ability to inspect the homes. You're doing that visual inspection. And then you just have to decide what is that potential cost of repair. So if we don't have an inspection completed, and there is no holdback clause that allows for some money in reserve to pay for potential issues, what's the worst that can happen? And what is that going to cost me? So if, I, if, the, if the pump is shit and doesn't work when we open up the pool in the springtime or summertime, how much is that going to cost? How much does the pool heater cost? 
what it would it cost to replace the liner or to refinish the concrete if it's concrete pool or the pool surround or the pool cover? What do all of those things cost? Educate yourself because that's no different than, you know, replacing a roof or a furnace or an AC. At some point, those mechanical components and those components that protect your pool and whatnot they will have to be replaced. It's just a question of whether or not it's now or in the future. And if it's in the future, how long is that future, right? 